been a long night. Hey, yo, what up? It's Young One back here with my Battle of the Zay 2 prediction blog. I'm here with my good friend. Laughing stock. Fresno. Eating McDonald's. Thanks for having me, Young One. That was a drive. I'm tired, but yes. I'm ready to talk about people I don't know. We're here live in the studio together. We are. He's sitting right next to me. You can tell. It's America. We do what we want. Laughing stock in this blog is because he's a funny motherfucker. And uh, he's on the card in one of the most anticipated battles. Probably the most. The most. Uh, they're probably the two most famous people on the card. This battle's gonna be a 10, because when me and Isaac stand side by side, we look like a 10. Let's get into this first battle. I figure we could work from the bottom, go on up. Do you know who Luck Lush or Maliko are? Um, I know who Maliko is. Maliko, uh, has gone on record saying he thinks I'm corny. Uh huh. And I think he's corny. But that's fine, you know. From what I know, he wins battles, so as corny as I think he is, he gets the job done. I don't really know much about Luck Luce other than I've heard good things. I don't want Maliko to win, but he probably will because he's good at winning battles. All right, so we got- Do you know who either of them are? I heard Laughingstock one time, he said that uh, Maliko was corny. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> I mean, so we got uh, Maliko winning the battle. I guess we'll move on. Let's see, we got uh, Shimako versus Jabberjaws. Do you know who either of those guys are? <laughs> I know Jabberjaws. Same uh, here. He did a he had a pretty decent performance against uh, Napalm from Elephant Graveyard. Shout out Elephant Graveyard. Uh, he took that battle actually. He was very well prepared. He impressed me. He was better than I thought. He'd be honest. But unfortunately, I don't know who uh, Shimako is. I don't either. Um, he has a. I, I think Shimako and Maliko should have had the weird name battle. That yeah. would have been better. No jabs too. He, he's either good or bad. I, again, at a default, I'm gonna have to give it to Jabs simply out of familiarity. Shimako might be a beast. It'd be. I'm like, I'll find out come August 17th. There you go. We got Jabberjaws winning the battle 2-1 to because I would never feel comfortable giving Jabberjaws a 3-0. All right, next, uh, we've got two guys I've never heard of again. Uh, we got Paranormal Izak versus Laughingstock. Battle of the no names. Fucking never heard of them. This is the dark match that they show to the crowd before Monday Night Raw starts. <laughs> In case they fuck up, they don't have to put it on TV. Well, what, let's hear your predictions, Andrew. Let's see. Want... I'm going with Laughing Stock, two to one, and the only reason I'm not giving him the 3-0 is because Isaac has a lot of sleepers for some reason. He just comes like, he'll say some corny stuff, and then he'll have a really funny ass punchline, kill it, and then all of a sudden the crowd's back on his side, and then he'll stumble, and then he'll have another punchline to get the crowd back on his side. However, Laughing Stock is clean all the time. Never even seen him stumble, uh, and he's a great MC. Laughing Stock, two one. Uh, but Isaac's gonna have some sleepers. Hopefully, if he doesn't have any slip ups, it'll be a much closer battle. But I think Laughing Stock's taking it either way. Uh, I don't know if you want to predict your own battle, if you have anything to say about it. It's kind of subjective, you know. Um, I don't mean to suck my own dick. The no pause because I'm doing it to myself. It's not good. I'm a 11 and 0, um, timed and judged. And but this is Isaac's the best opponent I've had to face yet. Uh, so I'm gonna give it to Isaac two to one because. Uh, he has really good crowd control and uh, people like him. He's like the Snorlax of battle rap where he won't do much, but the stuff he does will obliterate you. Yeah. And so he knows if he picks his if he picks his angles right, then he's pretty hard to beat. But uh, so either, it's not gonna be a body bag either way. 2-1 him, 2-1 me. As long as it's funny, as long as it's entertaining, That's uh, right. I, I could give a shit. Cypher versus Shrapnel. It's gonna be a very, very interesting battle. All honesty, friendship aside on paper, I think Cypher's gonna win material alone. He's he's been he hasn't battled in a while. He's probably got a chip on his shoulder, he wants to prove something. Fucking King like who is it? Christian 818 deleted his one of his past battles or something. He's had a streak of bad luck and yeah. he's just ready to chop someone's head off with a straight edge blade because he's straight edge. Uh, 
I'm gonna have to disagree, unfortunately. I think uh, Shrapnel's gonna come with the W. Uh, no offense to Cypher, Cypher's really dope, actually. Um, I don't know, Shrapnel's just on his shit lately. He had a pretty, uh, pretty disappointing loss to Gambit because I thought he took that battle. Uh, shout out to Gambit. Gambit's mad at me right now. Uh, why, is Gam why is Gambit mad at you? Because I told him he looks like the dude from Penn and Teller on his new album cover. <laughs> <laughs> I think Shrapnel took that battle. I haven't really seen him, you know, lose where I was like, oh, Shrapnel just lost the battle. Yeah, going Shrapnel 2-1. That's it. That's why we're here. We might not agree, but we have reasoning behind That's right. us. That's right. Mad Flex versus Denter. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Is Denter the dude, is he the dude Joe Cutter threw a sweater at? No, no, no. Uh, Denner's the guy that, uh, he's an elephant graveyard, he looks Asian, Joe Cutter did battle him and he took his teeth out during that battle. How um, about not see that? Yeah, you gotta look that up, shout out to Cutter for taking this guy shout down. Shout out to though. Cutter, Cutter's the homie and I I feel like a bad friend for not having seen that. Denner's actually a really dope MC though, uh, I've seen him, it just depends which Denner shows up, if he's, if he's clean, if he's on his shit, if he's actually taking his time to prepare. Denner battles like every other weekend so... Sometimes he's not as like, you know, not as prepared as he could be, but he's still usually on his shit. Uh, Mad Flex is always fucking dope too. He beat Sinner pretty decisively in a dope ass battle. I know, do you want to call this one? Uh, based on everything I just heard, I have, I got, I'm gonna bet Mad Flex. A, because he just battled in Seaside Central Coast and I heard he did really well. I still haven't seen him, but I've heard good things. He's really good. You just said he battles every, uh, dinner battles every weekend, which, if you spread yourself too thin, it could be a quantity over quality thing, and you might not body someone as much as you should. Right. And Madflex started following me on Twitter today. So by those there reasons, you go. I'll give it to Madflex. It's going to be 2-1 either way. Uh, I'm going to go with Denner ha having a lot of sleepers that nobody's really going to get. I think Denner's going to win online, but Madflex is going to win on pers in person, if that's fair to say. I don't know oh, if you... That, that happens, yes. Yeah. Caddy Ron versus uh, A.B. Hoggish. Mm -hmm. It's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird fucking battle. Uh, the only Ab Hoggish battle I've ever seen is him and QP. Apparently, he's been in the game. I don't know if he's a jungle cat or what, but and he's been around a while. And Caddy's Caddy. Caddy has been, I think, really good as of late. Um, yeah. The last battle of the Zay. And I just think that he's been on a roll, his mind straight, that fucking hemo rage is circulating through his everything. It's true. So uh, just based on momentum alone, I don't know the last time AB Hoggish battled, but I'm gonna give it to Cat Black Ron. Uh, he had a really fucking dope battle against uh, my good fellow Arizonan Rum Nitty. Shout out Rum Nitty for a fucking classic. Uh, Rum Nitty actually took that battle, so Hoggish might be, you know, he might have something to prove this time. He's a dope cat. He. I don't know if he has the stage presence, honestly. Like, Caddy, Caddy just can fucking command a crowd. You can just tell he's experienced. He can say anything that's half as dope as Hoggish, but it'll sound twice as dope because he's got the crowd control. I battled yes. Caddy like Ron, and he said, I collect baby cum twice. Yeah. And it was greatest shit. I don't know why, but it was. He, well, it's true. Like, I don't know how he found that out about you. Like, I, very few people. I didn't know him beforehand, so there's obviously a snitch on deck. <laughs> I mean, you've shown me your collection of baby cum. It's... it's it's impressive. Hoggish is gonna have uh, crazy wordplay and gun bars and Caddy's just gonna poke fun at him for being Asian and black and fucking short. Uh, He's Asian, black, and short? Yeah, those are Holy a bad combination. Shit. So, I mean, I don't know. We're going Caddy Ron just off the uh, momentum and stage presence alone, but Hoggish is gonna put up a hell of a fight. But I think Caddy's gonna come out the decisive winner in this. Lex D, a, formerly known as Lex Diamond versus Reverse Live. It's gonna be a good. That's gonna, I think that's gonna be the battle of the night. Who do you got taking it? You go first. I got Lex. I got Lex taking this one because he's a likable guy. He's got bars and jokes. Like he can fucking. You you got to be careful when you battle somebody that's funny all the time because if you try to match wits and be funny, then they come with bars and you're fucked. If, with uh, Reverse Live, you kind of know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get some jokes and you're gonna get some unbelievable gun bars and you're gonna get some. Uh, I'm gonna point you in the face kind of stuff. But like Lex D, he's got the mixed bag where you're just you know you don't know which angle he's gonna take, but it's gonna be funny either way. 
So I think Lex is gonna take this one. I'm gonna give it to Lex too. Reverse is the homie, and he's the most consistent battler in California. Like, he battles all the time for Hello Leagues, and he always brings three solid rounds, no fuck ups, all good material. This is in front of 20 or 200 people. You're gonna get a good reverse live, but going by momentum, just Lex, like, Lex is on a roll, man. Even, like, he, even his loss in the Grand Prix was pretty controversial. A lot yeah. of people don't think he took that. Uh, but, uh, so even in his losses, he still wins in the end. And I just think that it. he's on such a roll that, like, the snowball is going down a hill. And I, I'm going to give it to Lex. He's a bit, he's refreshing. It's too good to battle me. Ooh. No, no. You know the story Ooh. behind my Lex D disc and my <laughs> battle? I'm not going to make this about me, but I. <laughs> I've talked to Lex and I think he's good and he's he's a fan of mine and we're cool and I hit him up on Facebook saying let's do a mustache battle it's like the battle of the beards like Dan and Henry Bowers you yeah, know like, it like definitely would be that'd, get, that'd get hipster views if anything and he never hit me back <laughs> so I was writing for my Tox Chemic battle and I was trying to think of something and one of my buddies said hey did Lex D ever hit you back about the mustache battle and I went no, no, he didn't. <laughs> and so I just, I wrote, oh yeah, like, fuck Lex Diamond. I threw that into my mouth. So I'd, I'd have no beef with the guy. I'm a fan of his. Shots but fired. people have asked about that, and that's why I said it. Next battle is Fredo versus Joe Cutter. What do you think? Uh, oh, Joe Cutter is one of those, there's an old saying, a good comedian says funny things, a great comedian says things funny. Joe Cutter can take something that's lame with someone else and make it dope. Yeah. I seriously hold, heard him tell some dude, you drive around and your dad's LeBaron. And I was like, <laughs> for whatever reason, it was fucking great. So, Cutter has delivery on his side, I, I think a bit more than Fredo. Although, Fredo's aggressive and good and he's not bad at all, but Cutter and EK is just one of the best battles in the last several months. And I mean, Fredo and Priya were good too. That's but, true. Uh, Shout out I to just Priya. Think, yeah, Did you would you hug Pariah? I, you know what? Per, after I saw Pariah push Fal Kilmer, I just I don't see a, a, a mean person. I just see a guy who needs a hug. To be honest, the type of dude that soft. if you hugged him in front of his buddies, he'd get pissed and shove you. But then afterwards, walk up to you and go, "Thank you, <laughs> Pariah. I'm here for you, dog. If you I'm, need a I'm, hug, I'll tell you to your fucking face. I'm scared of you, Pariah. I'm giving it to Cutter, edging it, not a body bag." No, they they have the two on twos they're working on, so it's probably a lot of personal. They've been around each other a lot. Yeah. But um, I'm just going to give it to Cutter. Uh, I'm going to give it to Cutter as well, just because I feel like with Cutter, you never know what he's going to talk about, what he's going to say. He's always going to he's always going to have some race jokes and fucking Fredo's uh, Asian of some sort, I think. I don't know <laughs> which one, which type. Who knows? Joe Cutter can make Fredo Chinese for three rounds. He, he, he did it to Denton. I've got uh, Cutter going... Uh, winning this battle just off unpredictability. I agree. Remy D versus the dead man. Ooh. I don't think either of these dudes are going to have a hometown advantage. I think it's just going to be bars on top of bars, underneath bars, wrapped in bars, and then sautéed in bars and deep fried in bars. I think there's going to be some bars involved. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that they should be slowing down that they're not going to. Uh, that so we're gonna have to watch the battle like nine times just so you can catch half of the wordplay that's gonna be going on in this. It's one of those battles that when you open it on your browser, you have to open up Google as well. So who do you got? Uh, I got. Oof, damn. I said Dead Man before. All right, no, I said Remy before, but now I'm leaning towards Dead Man. And again, both these dudes are just you know standing at the doorstep of headlining, and so. It, it's just a matter of time before they're both solidified top tier dudes. That's yeah. gonna have to, we'll, we'll see who wants to be that first. I'm gonna go with Dead Man. I changed it. There, I can change it. I don't care. It's a prediction blog. My blog. My my channel. Fuck you, laughing. You pick. You pick, <laughs> you pick Dead Man. I'm going with Dead Man. Then I pick Remy because <laughs> fuck you. That's why. Uh, all right. So I said Dead Man. You said Remy, which brings us to the main event. We got Roan versus uh, Dirtbag Dan. What do you think? Ooh, I mean, this Dan's event, you know, this is his baby. It's in the Zay, rawr. Um, and he's been on a killing spree. He's Dan 2.0, or Dan 
He's good, damn it. <laughs> I mean, the, him and Tantrum and him and 100 Bullets have been two of the best Dirtbag Dan battles out of the last 100. But at the same time, Roan, even when Roan is like on, at a 7 for Roan, that's still a 10 for a lot of other battlers. Like, that's he's true. really charismatic and really good. Yeah. So. I can't imagine anyone getting stomped out by the other one in this battle, but I can picture Dirtbag Dan edging it because he's been, he's got more evidence more recently of what he can do, and since A, he doesn't want to embarrass himself in front of his hometown. It's true. Um, so I'm going to give it to Dirtbag, um, sliding into home plate by an edge. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree. Uh, Roan's one of, if not my favorite battler right now. Uh, but see, the thing that, that I'm worried about is he goes into a battle winning already just because he's charismatic. Uh, like I said, uh, somebody asked, like in the in an interview he did with Blizzard, somebody was like, damn, how did Blizzard get bodied in an interview? Just because Roan's fucking charismatic, he can talk. Uh, so he comes in winning the battle from the intro, and uh, unfortunately, the, the, unfortunately for him, I guess, the playing field's going to be a little bit more level because uh, Dirtbag Dan's just as fucking charismatic, just as funny, so... But I think Roan's gonna get it. Uh, his past few battles, uh, Protege and Blizzard were complete fucking body bags. And he's got something to make up for after uh, what happened with Fresco. So uh, I'm going with Roan 2 1. Weird story. My, my ex girlfriend, I tried to get her into battle rap because it's what I watched and what I did. And so I showed her battlers I think girls would like and find funny. And she told me she had a crush on both Dirtbag Dan and Roan. So when I told her they were headlining the event, she, like, I'm surprised she didn't ask me to film it so she can, you know, have fun with it on her own time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> shout outs to paddlers that can probably take my, my my girlfriends. Yeah, shout out to Roan and Dirtbag for for potentially stealing Laughingstock's woman. Yep. Don't Real do talk. So, uh, all right, so that's pretty much the card. We'll do a quick little rundown. Uh, of who we picked, so you can you can skip forward to this part if you just want to know who we think are gonna win. So first we had Luck Lush versus Maliko. We picked Maliko. Maliko. Next we had uh, Shamako versus Jabberjaws. We picked Jabberjaws. Don't remember. Jabberjaws. Okay. Uh, Laughing Stock versus Paranormal Isaac. We had Paranormal Isaac 3-0 body bag. Cipher versus Shrapnel. We agreed to disagree. I picked Shrapnel. Cipher on the sun. Shrapnel over here. Mad Flex versus Denter. We picked Mad Flex, I think. Yeah, we did. Caddy Ron versus uh, a is it at Ab Hoggish or A B Hoggish? I don't know. I've heard him get called both. So uh, Hoggish. Luckily, I, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it because I think uh, good old Uncle Robert Paulson is gonna take that one. <laughs> I agree. Reverse Live versus Lex D. We both agreed on. See, reverse life. Lex Cubic Lex. Zirconia. I'm Lex Cubic Zirconia. Uh, Lex Diamond. Shout out Lex. Check out his uh, in installment of the Go With The Flow session. He fucking kills it. Fredo versus Joe Cutter. We picked Joe Cutter. Cutter S. Cutter S. Thompson. Remy D versus Deadman. Uh, we agreed to disagree on I picked Deadman. He picked Remy D. Dirtbag Dan versus Roan. Another uh, disagreement. I picked Dirtbag. I picked Roan. Shout out to everyone involved in the card. It's nothing but dope matchups. Every battle will hopefully deliver. Um, I mean, it's so, so many good battlers, you can't help but have good content. Right. Uh, when is the date again? It's Saturday, August 17th at the Canary. I'm not sure where that is. I think it's in Japantown of San Jose, California. I think that's pretty much it. You got anything else to say to uh, Paranormal Isaac or anybody on the card? Um. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to our blog. I hope you watched the whole thing. It's quite long, but it's quite hilarious. Uh, shout out to Laughingstock for joining me. Uh, he took a three-hour drive from Fresno all the way down to uh, my humble home. Thank you for having me. I, I, I admire it's worth the drive. I encourage everyone to visit the Young One Studios. You heard that. You heard it here first. Uh, live from Jordan River Recordings, we got Young One, Laughingstock, signing out.